Okay, so today I've got a personal treat of mine. One of my favorite manufacturers for webcams, uh, Obspot, has released something called the Obspot Tail Air. And you can see that it's a pretty big camera, but it's got a few tricks up its sleeve. So I'm going to show you that and how it compares to the Obspot Tiny 2 4K camera. Both of them obviously have gimbals on them. They can do all of the things in terms of framing your image automatically. But I'm going to show you what the Obspot Tail Air can do and all of its features, so stay tuned for that, and let's go. Okay, so today I'm testing out the Obspot Air. Now, it's a tiny PTZ 4K camera. Why is it called the Air? Well, it's wireless and can also stream directly over streaming services, and it's got a built-in battery so that it can behave and function wirelessly. All right, so this is the Obspot Tail Air camera that you can see now. And I've got basically the uh, settings uh, on defaults everywhere, so you don't have anything set on the camera. I'm seeing a little bit of flicker from my LED lights uh, in the capture. I'm guessing that's because I'm on uh, the wrong frequency range. Usually that doesn't always come through. And by the way, this camera on OBS didn't have the flicker, so I guess it kind of depends on its settings. Um, the other thing I wanted to test was the audio. So now I'm in noise reduction level zero. I'm going to turn up noise reduction to level one, and this is the built-in microphone array, stereo microphone array with noise reduction level one, just to see if it kind of lessens some of the room noise a little bit and kind of focuses in on my voice a little. Now I'm going to turn up to noise reduction level two, and you know I tried this earlier actually with uh, air conditioning fans and other noises going on in the room. This was the perfect noise reduction level for me because regardless of computer fans or other things that turned on, it was a great balance between basically blocking all of that kind of background noise and still sounding good from a microphone and audio pickup perspective. Now on noise level three, what it tends to do is sound a little bit more over process, which I'm at right now in noise level three. So you can kind of hear it probably, it's gonna sound a little bit distant, like I'm talking through a tube or a tunnel a little bit. But that's going to be great for something like a very high noise environment, maybe if you're outdoors, you have wind, machinery behind you, those types of things, then that's probably when you use noise level three. Otherwise, I would say go for noise reduction level one or two for most other environments. So what it means, you know, from the camera's perspective is it's really a great camera for something like if you're going to, to church and filming from a church, if you're filming crowds even, if you've got a full production setup, even with different cinema cameras, you might want to use that to film back at the crowd and have a remote control with a gimbal either on your phone or with the remote to be able to kind of direct where that camera is looking at, you know, panning the audience, etc. Another great use for it for sports, for example, so bringing it to a game, you've got the IR filter option. You probably want to bring an umbrella or something to make sure that, you know, the lens uh, and the camera itself doesn't get rained on if there's inclement weather. But basically it gives you a lot of different options. So. I'm going to actually take the camera now and film from another location, not here, with non-ideal lighting, so we'll see you over there. Alright, so let's have some fun with this. Now I've actually got the camera here wirelessly, the Opspot uh, Tail Air, in my kitchen just to see what it looks like and what it sounds like. It's actually streaming over the app using uh, wireless streaming over Wi-Fi. Couple of things to note that I found kind of as I was um, as I was playing with the camera and testing it out, it does draw a bit of current in terms of when you set it into UVC mode on the camera. So you do have to set, you know, if you have to pick between UVC mode or wireless streaming mode, when you put on UVC mode, I would say it's a little bit more power hungry than most uh, webcams are at least because it's charging a battery and acting as a UVC camera. So it's kind of doing two things at once. And I believe that will kind of oversaturate some of the power circuits if you are low on power, let's say, and charging the battery at the same time. So something to be aware of. Uh, just to have a look at what this looks like, I've got a little bit of backlight. It's not ideal. I don't have my uh, normal key light set up and all those things. But just so you can see it and hear it with noise reduction level two, this is the Obspot Tail Air camera. So like the other Obspot PTZ cameras, it also features AI tracking uh, automatically and also gesture controls that you can do with your hands. 
and it adds AI director grids. Now this is something that can divide your video basically into different smaller grids in real time. So you've got like a little mini uh, kind of technical director that you can use as part of your application, kind of like you can do with OBS in terms of the scenes. So for wireless connectivity, it supports NDI and it can also stream to your mobile device using the OBSpot Start app. And you can also connect to it uh, if you want to use multiple cameras, you can do that as well to get all the different shots that you want. And it also has wired support as well. You can either connect over USB-C, there's also a micro HDMI port on the camera as well, and you can use Ethernet over that USB-C port using uh, power over Ethernet also. And there's even an onboard micro SD card where the videos will record as well. So you've got a backup of everything that you are streaming also when you record from the camera. Now importantly, it also works with common streaming services. For example, things like YouTube, Twitch, LinkedIn, and also Restream, and then apps, the common ones like OBS and XSplit. And there's a few more as well uh, that I will also put on the screen. So. For wireless uh, protocols, just to be kind of uh, exhaustive there in terms of what it can do, it can support NDI, which by the way needs a separate activation code to use, RTMP and RTSP, as well as the Visca protocol. Now its larger size means that it also has room for an improved optic stack compared to the tinier PTZ webcams. You know, the OBSpot Tiny 2 is one of my favorites at the tinier size, but this uh, this larger one, the Tail Air, produces an f1.8 aperture with an equivalent focal length of 23 millimeters. So not a super wide field of view, um, but the image quality is pretty good from it. So uh, it's got, and speaking of that, it's got a two micrometer pixel size, which is meant to deliver better clarity. Uh, as well as better low light performance. The sensor is another one over 1.8 inch sensor. And then for audio, this camera has a built-in stereo two microphone array. It also has built-in noise reduction that's configurable through the app. Now, one of the nice things with this camera, unlike a lot of webcams, is it has a separate kind of uh, three, three and a half millimeter plug-in uh, port for a TRS microphone which would be nice for things like a wireless microphone if you're further away from the camera. And I'd suspect if you are using it for, you know, things like if you're filming in your kitchen or doing something outside or you're in a church maybe or place of worship, those are gonna be further away. So that means you're gonna to wanna to have a different microphone probably plugged into it for wireless support or a shotgun microphone or something that gives you a bit more range and distance for the camera. The microphone arrays in OpSpot uh, cameras are usually pretty good but you're kind of fighting with the physics of being too far from the microphone and room echo and all those things. So typically it's gonna be better given the distances to have something like a wireless microphone set up plugged into that three and a half millimeter port. Or if you've got something that you're using uh, like a Blackmagic or ATEM device that uh, is handling all of your camera feeds and all of your audio feeds, then you're probably gonna wanna use the audio from something like that and switch the different cameras around based on what cameras you have uh, available to you. And finally, something else that it's pretty exciting in terms of this camera, there are a lot of different accessories for it. So one of the things I loved about the Tiny 2 was that it had that remote control that you could use for it specifically with the USB-A connector there. Now this one also has a smart remote that you can use and connect it via Bluetooth. And that way you can navigate the gimbal of the camera using a nice joystick type controller. And to give it a bit more battery life as well, you can use uh, the 360 degree rotating charge base. It's actually got a charge port on the bottom with pins on the bottom of the camera. And then you can add it to the base and still spin it around and that gives you additional uh, time in terms of being able to operate the camera wirelessly. And then for that scenario I mentioned earlier about connecting over Ethernet, there is a USB-C to Ethernet adapter that you can get so that you can do power over Ethernet and have Ethernet-based video effectively. Now if you're shooting outdoors, and one of the cool things, one of the things I loved about some of the DJI equipment that I've had uh, in the past and have currently is that you can also get uh, ND filters for it so that you can have the right uh, image, the right level. See if you're in a bright uh, sunny shot or something, 
you can actually apply ND filters to the camera that you can buy as a separate accessory for the camera. I don't have them yet. Uh, it's something that I'd love to try out, but I don't currently have them to try with the OpSpot Tail Air. So, okay, so I've got a little bit of change of plans in terms of how I was actually planning this video out. Now, the next segment that I actually filmed for this was using the camera's app, the OpSpot Start app, which you'd use in, in terms of configuring the camera itself setting up things like uh, the RTSP setting for it to stream. So what I'm gonna do is actually break this video into two different parts. So at the end of part one, I'll say, if you've seen everything that you need to see, the camera does really well, I think, you know, for these types of settings where you need something that's fully self-contained, you know, like uh, at a church, at a sporting event, maybe as a, a secondary camera for a live performance if you want to shoot the crowd or get some different shots that you can control with that remote control gimbal. The OpSpot Tail Air is very, very flexible. It does stream into uh, things like OBS. You can use NDI, which I didn't try because I don't have one of the keys, but you can use RTSP and I've got all of that running that I'll throw a, a, just a screenshot up on the screen for now, but I want to walk through the entire app in part two but for now, I'll just let you know that I do recommend this camera for, you know, for its different flexible use cases. Yes, you could probably get a better image out of something like a mirrorless camera with uh, kind of custom glass and those things, but the glass on those cameras to do a nice production level typically will probably uh, be more expensive even than this camera is just for the glass alone. So this is still a very good uh, option in terms of those types of use cases. It's the OBSPOT Tail Air and I'll see you over in part two. I won't put the link on the screen quite yet as of day one. It might take a couple of days to get that up, but once it's ready, I'll show the link on the screen for part two. Thanks for watching.